Hey, I'm Vlad with Low Marble. And I'm Lorenza. And we're going to be doing a epoxy wall art. First, you're going to do a primer because with makeup, you put primer on so that it stays longer and it doesn't fall off. So we have to do that first. Not to prime is a crime. And also, you're going to want to put a primer under the epoxy to make the colors pop a lot more. So let's say you have a white epoxy that you're using, you're going to use a white primer instead of a black one because it's going to turn out all washed out and gray. I already put the primer on onto some hardy backer boards and I'm going to rewind right now to show you exactly how I did that. So before mixing in the part A with the part B, you want to pre-mix the part A which has all the pigment in it because the pigment settles down to the bottom of the bucket a lot of times. You want to get that all mixed in there so you get a nice even uh, coating in the color that you want. The primer is mixed at a ratio of one part B to four parts A. I like to put the part B in first and then mix it up with the A. Now we're just going to roll it on with a foam roller. So now it's the next day, the primer completely cured. I'm gonna sand it down with some 220 grit sanding paper so that it has a great mechanical bond to the epoxy and won't slide off. I wanna show them my eyeshadow. Whoa. <gasps> Look. Look, you see that sparkle? Whoa. Wow. So pretty. Now it's time for the actual epoxy. And I'm going to be using G100 because it's a floor epoxy and those tend to be cheaper um, because they're not food safe and it's going to be on the wall. Nobody's going to be licking it. So. Before mixing the epoxy, you have to level the table and cover the floor and the table because, you know, it's going to drip down and you don't want that. So. And then I also cut up these little spacers to put the, uh, the hardy board on top of so that it doesn't sit flat on the table it's going to be easier to remove like that. So the G100 is mixed at two parts A to one part B. I'm going to pour 400 milliliters of part B into three separate containers. And we're going to be using three colors. So pearl, onyx, and Atlantis green. And then 800 milliliters of part A in three separate containers. But before you do that, you want to mix up the part A. So now we're going to be adding in the colors, which is the fun part. So take it. I'm just going to take a dollop from the popsicle stick and I'm going to mix it into the part B because it's more liquid than the part A is. And it's going to saturate a lot easier into there. So now we're gonna mix in everything together. So we're gonna put the colors into part A. And you gotta make sure to work quickly once you do this because as soon as the part A and the part B um, react with each other, it's gonna cause a chemical reaction. It's gonna start curing a lot faster inside of the bucket um, than it would if it's spread out nice and flat. And it also gives off a lot of heat. So if you're not paying attention, you can melt the bucket it's going to make a big mess, and if you're really unlucky, it could cause a fire. So now we're going to pour in the colors, and we're just going to do like little dots all over the place, and then we're going to mix it up. Now the next step is I'm going to take a little squeegee and magic trowel, and spread it everywhere. This spreads it to all the ball spots and it also overlaps the colors so there's gonna be a lot of um, depth and a lot of nice texture to it. It looks so good, babe. I like it. Now we're gonna move it around in random directions with some foam rollers. Like try not to make the same movement. Uh, it's going to look too repetitive, it's going to look copy-pasted. 
So just go crazy, but don't mix in the same spot for too long or else all the colors are gonna get mixed up. There's not gonna be too much contrast and it's kind of be like um, mixing a bunch of crayons all together, mixing a bunch of different colored Play-Doh all together. It's gonna make this ugly brown. And be sure to watch for bald spots also because once that dries, that's it. It's gonna be like that forever. So here's a bald spot right here. This is stuff that you gotta watch out for because you're using black, it can sneak up on you. Boom, boom, and it'll heal up on its own. Now what you see right now isn't gonna look exactly like uh, what it's gonna look like when it's done because the epoxy is gonna flow on its own. And um, I'm gonna try to keep it on like a time loop for you to see everything in a sped up time. But before we do that, we're gonna have to Get rid of the bubbles, that's a big issue. We're gonna use a torch. A torch! To get rid of the bubbles, but he's gonna what? tell you that. So a lot of people use a heat gun to get rid of it. Um, I'm gonna be using a torch, and you gotta make sure to get all the bubbles, but not hold it in the same place for too long, especially with colors like white, because you heat it up too hot, it's gonna turn yellow. Depending on the time, um, you're gonna have different uh, work times for it. Like right now it's winter for us, so it's not gonna cure for a while. We have like maybe 40 minutes of, well not 40 minutes, we have 30 minutes of work time until it starts to harden up. In the summer it could be a little bit faster though. Since I'm showing you guys the time lapse, I'm not gonna take the camera off and uh, show how I'm cleaning this, but the easiest way is to spray denatured alcohol and um, Use bound to use some paper towels to clean everything out until um, until it's completely clean. And don't wait too long. As soon as you're done, start to clean all your tools. So the epoxy dried. Uh, this takes about like 24 hours, and now I'm gonna have to sand down these little bubbles on the bottom. So I'm gonna be using some 60 grit paper on an orbital sander. So it's a good thing I caught this uh, right now before it was too late, but it's supposed to lock in like this and that way this top piece is going to be epoxy to the epoxy wall art we got and then it's going to keep it on the wall. But I screwed it in way too tight over here and it's not even going to come in. So be sure to watch out for that and don't screw them in too tight unless, uh, unless you're sure that it's going to be a loose fit. Now we're going to use some epoxy adhesive to glue this in place. Whoa! <laughs> I can't wait just a little bit, just a tiny, tiny thing. Oh, they definitely saw that. No, they definitely did. <laughs> I think I got epoxy in my hair. I'm going to have to take that out with acetone. Nail polish remover. We did it! Woo! So you've made it to the end of my video, but now I want to ask you for a quick favor. See the YouTube algorithm gets tricked into showing my video to a lot more people if a lot of people comment on it. 
So criticize me, praise me, or just ask a question. As long as you leave a comment, I'm gonna appreciate it a lot. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next video.